Hi guys, welcome back to Informed Beauty. So today's video is another wedding series video and I wanted to give my tips about traveling or flying specifically with a wedding dress. Because our wedding was a different province, we live in Alberta, we were getting married in Ontario, it was necessary for me to fly with my dress to my wedding. And I did have a lot of anxieties about this, but now that I've been through that process and I came out all right on the other end, I thought that I would create a video about just some tips and some advice that I would give to other brides traveling in airports and on planes with their wedding dresses. As an aside, I do want to mention that there are other options. I know that some people will purchase their wedding dress in the place that they're getting married, so then they don't have to travel with it, or they will have their dress couriered. I did not feel comfortable doing that just because I did not want to lose my dress in the process because it would not be on me during the process. What if it got lost or if it got wrinkled, I did not have a service to iron my dress there or steam my dress because my bridal store was in Alberta and they did all of those services for me here. So I did not want to waste all that work and then have to spend more money having it ironed again or made to look appropriate for the wedding again. We're trying to find a service over in Ontario for that. So that is why I flew with my wedding dress. And so let's just get right on into the tips for flying with your wedding dress. So tip number one is do your research about the airline that you're flying with, as well as the airports that you're going through. So when I went on to, we flew with Air Canada, and when I went on to the Air Canada website, it looked like for uh, clothing in garment bags, they could be carried on the plane. And it did specify a carry-on dimension, so the garment bag somehow had to still fit the carry-on dimensions, which doesn't really make sense to me because unless you're carrying clothes for a small child, your wedding dress or your suit is not going to be the typical carry-on dimensions. Although keeping in mind it is flat and you can fold it over in half in your garment bag. When I called, because I did call the airline as well, they said that if you carry on your dress onto the uh, plane, of course, that dress is counted as part of your carry-on quota. So you may not be able to carry on as much other stuff onto the plane. So that's something to keep in mind. So all I brought was my purse in addition to my dress, and that was it. I would not recommend bringing the dress in checked luggage because if it gets lost, that is not a situation you want to deal with. My bridal store did not recommend traveling uh, with your wedding dress in your checked luggage either. So that is why I decided to go with carry-on just because you never know. I've never had my luggage lost, but I know it's happened to other people and it would just be absolutely devastating if you spent all this money on a beautiful dress and then the airline lost it. Um, so as annoying as it is to have to carry this bulky dress, it is well worth it to bring it as carry-on. So back to my phone call with Air Canada, when I called them, they said that typically they would have just have you put the dress in the overhead bin. After everyone else puts their stuff, you can put your stuff, your, your dress up at the top after you fold it. Of course, I was nervous about that because I didn't want to wrinkle my dress or I wanted to minimize how much wrinkling my dress would have. So what I did, and this was based off of some things that I read online on forums, is when we actually entered the plane, I talked to one of the flight attendants and I asked them, hey, we're traveling for our wedding. I have a wedding dress. Is it okay if I have it, uh, if you guys hang it up in the closet in business class? And uh, they were really happy to help me out with that. They were actually really excited that we were getting married and there was a um, a couple on their way to their wedding on the plane. Uh, now, I think we also got lucky because we were the first ones on the plane because we were, we had priority seating because we were traveling with my grandmother who has mobility issues. So we had seats that we paid for that were priority. They were right behind business class. And so I think that really helped us because when we got on the plane, there was no one else there. And so the flight attendants were not as busy running around doing things. And we asked nicely, we weren't expecting it or demanding it so I would just ask really politely one of the flight attendants and I think it would just depend on how busy the flight is and how busy the flight attendants are and just the flight attendants themselves and how willing they are to go the extra uh, length but I do know some people that have traveled with their wedding dresses they were able to um, leave an entire overhead bin just for the dress and again that would totally depend on 
the flight and how much other uh, luggage and suitcases there are for carry on that people bring. <laughs> but uh, worst case scenario, I was prepared to fold my dress and put it all over in the overhead bin on top of other people's luggage. I'm very relieved I didn't have to do that because I think it definitely minimized the amount of wrinkling that my dress had um, during its travels. So just research, but generally speaking, I think most airlines would just have you put the dress in the overhead bin unless you're lucky, but it is worth it to ask once you get on the plane. It's not one of those questions you can ask the call center because they're just going to tell you it has to go in the overhead bin or if it's too big if they deem it to be too big or there's too much other carry-on on the plane they might force you to check it and that was my biggest fear is oh my gosh what if they force me to check it and so on but that i guess would be the worst case scenario and i don't know how often that would happen but it sounds like most people were successful at bringing their wedding dresses on as carry-on get tips from the bridal store so when i went to pick up my bridal dress after all of my alterations were done the uh, bridal store, they showed me how they folded the dress up inside of the garment bag because they do give you a garment bag. And then they showed me how to hang my train up over the hanger uh, when it's when I'm traveling with my dress. And so and they had it all pressed nice and, and everything. So it just helps to know how they package the dress up inside of the bag uh, so that um, to minimize wrinkling. And um, they just recommended that I you know, fold the dress over once and there was like a little hook to fold it over the hanger when I'm traveling with it, just so that it doesn't take up quite as much space traveling with another person. So I was traveling with my then fiance as well as my grandmother. Now my grandmother with limited mobility was not going to be helping me carry my wedding dress, but because I was traveling with my then fiance, now husband, um, he was able to help me carry the dress sometimes or he was able to deal with documents while I was holding the dress because it does take up space. It is heavy. So you can't necessarily do a bunch of other stuff while you're holding the dress. It just helps to have that other person to kind of maneuver the dress around and maneuver other things in the airport rather than if you were traveling on your own with your documents and this big heavy dress. So if possible, try and travel with at least one other person if you are traveling with your wedding dress. It does reduce the stress levels proper transport in a car to the airport. So I'm assuming you're taking a taxi or you're getting a ride or you're driving yourself to the airport. So making sure that you hang the dress up in the car or you lay it out on the back seat if you have space. We took a taxi, so um, we just asked the taxi driver to carefully hang it up on one of those handles in the taxi so that uh, just to minimize wrinkling because you don't want to blow all that extra time and, and uh, effort that you're spending on not wrinkling your dress on the plane and then have it wrinkled up in the car. Arrive to the airport early just in case there's issues with your dress when you're checking in or when you're trying to get on the plane. It just is way less stressful when you're carrying this big bulky dress to have more time uh, to deal with all of the documents and check and process and all of that jazz. Um, and that helped really reduce our stress, especially because we were traveling with a grandmother that needed extra assistance. Tip number eight, so last tip would be proper care post-flight. So this kind of ties into tips from the bridal store. Um, when I spoke with um, my alterations person at the bridal store, she actually did not recommend that I handheld steam or that I steam my dress with a handheld steamer uh, because that was my original plan was if there were any, if there was any wrinkling uh, after transport, I would just use a handheld steamer, no problem. But because my dress is satin, uh, she actually, uh, she recommended that I avoid that just because it can leave uh, stains on the dress and uh, she did not want me to walk down the aisle with water stains on my dress. So she said that worst case scenario, if you really want to steam it, uh, just put it in the shower while you're showering in your hotel or Airbnb and then it'll let some of those wrinkles out. And she also just recommended hanging the dress up as soon as you get to your destination, your hotel, your Airbnb, hanging it up and then uh, letting the train fall and so that gravity can do some of that work, especially because my dress was sad and it was heavy. Gravity can do some of that work. Um, but she did advise me not to use a handheld steamer. Now, your dress might be different. Always talk to your vital store and see what your options are. If you're not planning on um, having the dress serviced by a professional company on the other end of things when you travel to your destination. So I actually did buy a handheld steamer specifically for our wedding. That was before I spoke to the 
bridal store lady, but I'm still happy I have this because I could see myself using this for other purposes in my life now, post-wedding. So this was something that we actually had shipped over to Ontario so we didn't have to bring it with us on the plane. I was actually surprised with how little wrinkling there was. And I think that's also partly due to the fact that we were able to hang my dress up in the plane so it didn't have to be crushed or just like jostled around in, in a folded state on top of other people's luggage in an overhead bin. I didn't really feel the need to place my dress in the bathroom or anything like that. We were so busy, I didn't really get around to it anyway. But my dress was, um, it had very minimal wrinkling after the, our three and a half hour flight. And the dress actually stayed in a hotel as well as an Airbnb. So there was a lot of shuffling in different cars. Our overall, our experience was actually quite good. I had very low expectations going into our Air Canada flight. Uh, just because I've heard so many complaints and negative comments about the airline, but our flight attendants, I guess it just really depends on the flight attendant. Our flight attendants were fantastic, especially a one particular one. She was so excited about us getting married. Um, she brought us Prosecco and a signed card during that flight, which really made our day. I really reduced our stress levels and we really appreciated it. So we actually sent Air Canada um, a compliment. <laughs> so I was happy to be able to send a compliment about a specific employee of flight attendant rather than sending um, a complaint. Uh, so that was just a really unexpected thing. We, we certainly did not expect that. We did, I did want to mention, we did wear bride and groom shirts and my grandmother got a grandmother of the bride shirt for the plane. I just thought it would be a nice little cute touch, but I think it also helped the flight attendants identify our purpose on the flight, like where we were going, and maybe that also helped uh, the situation. Um, so if you're into that kind of stuff, it might not hurt to wear a bride and groom shirt. It's kind of fun, and um, it can help the flight attendants out a little bit as well, especially if things get really busy. One thing that I forgot to mention is I did ask the security personnel, I actually gave the airport a call and they transferred me to the security people. And they did say that if your dress doesn't fit through the screening tunnel that everything typically goes through that you bring on the, to the plane, you can ask to have your dress uh, checked by hand, like by a scanner uh, in a separate room or just like right then and there if it just doesn't fit. My biggest concern was what if they need to open up the dress and my my then fiance sees it. Um, so they told me you can ask for a separate private room to have the dress screened by hand if necessary. My dress actually ended up fitting just fine into the screening tunnel so I didn't have to worry about that. They just folded it up in half and then we put it in the tray and it went through. So I guess it would depend on your dress and how massive it is. Um, and uh, But just be aware that it sounds like uh, you are able to ask for a private screening room or just a screening, a hand screening if necessary. And a second thing that I forgot to mention is I realized that I had no way of transporting my veil. I didn't want to put my veil in checked luggage on our way to the wedding. Uh, so what I did is I ended up ordering these hangers from Amazon for a really good price. And what I did is I just attached my veil to this part right here. And then I used the hanger part to hang it onto the wedding dress hanger. And so the veil was just like lying flat up alongside the dress inside of the garment bag. So then it also prevented the veil from wrinkling. So I found that that was really useful. I know that sometimes wedding stores will sell something like this, like bridal clips, uh, but Amazon was a very good price. And I also ordered my veil on Amazon. So it's not like there was anything that came along with it, like a hanger or anything like that. I hope that this video provides you with at least a little bit of comfort or some helpful tips uh, for your travel with your wedding dress. I stressed about a lot about it a lot, but it ended up being just fine. Um, so just make sure you prepare and uh, don't try not to stress about it too much. Uh, so that is it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.